Hi, and welcome to the Biopharma Finder how-to videos. This is Jennifer Sutton, Software Product Manager, and this video I'm going to show you how to use the top-down workflow to process the uh, NIST antibody, and we're going to use an IDES digest, and we're going to process a UVPD data set, and we're also going to process at the same time an ETD data set. So this will be a multi-consensus uh, experiment and we will look at two modes of fragmentation. So this is the top-down home page and the 3.0 software. So the first step is to begin by naming your experiment. And then we're going to browse for our raw files. Now in this workflow you can actually have up to 10 raw files for a multi-consensus experiment and um, if you have more than that you could do a batch processing which would process the files individually using the same method. So we're going to select multi-consensus. We're going to select the uh, light chain, the FD, and the FC. We're going to pick the default method and we're going to start processing. The software is going to um, next open up the raw files and then we're going to select our peaks and in this case uh, when you do an IDES digest you're going to get three different uh, peaks that will loop and the elution order of the peaks will be the FC, the light chain, and then the FD. So on this page what we're going to do is we're going to use the averaging mode on the chromatogram and I'm going to create an average source spectrum here for the first peak. And this is going to do this for both raw files. So it's going to do this for the ETD data. And it's also going to do the same thing for the UVPD data. So you can see if we to toggle between the two, we have a average source spectrum for the two different MSMS spectra. You can click here to view uh, the scan headers for each one of these files if you need to adjust the scan header and also the activation type. So I'm going to assign the FC to this uh, peak. So peak one is going to be the FC and I'm going to use the deconvolution parameters below for peak one. Next I'm going to add a peak and then I'm just going to average over the light, um, light chain. So the middle peak for this is actually the light chain. So I associate the uh, protein sequence. Again, you see it works for both. Add one more peak, scroll down, and this is the FD. So I'm going to do the same thing, average across the peak. Um, it's going to have average source spectrum for both. And then we're gonna select the FD. So once we're finished, we can go next. On the identification page, we're not going to, we do not need to make any changes here, but you could if you made a mistake or you forgot something. And we're going to save this method so that if we would like to reuse it, we can. And you can also overwrite uh, methods. And now it's going to be added to the queue. So once the uh, so experiment is finished processing, you'll be able to open it from the queue. Now this uh, experiment takes about, I think, anywhere for, from three to four minutes to process. Um, it's a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up a experiment that I've already processed, and I can do that through the load results. And so if we come here, what we can see on the um, load results page, it tells us a lot of information about the sequences that we used and um, the different methods. So I can uh, sort uh, using or filter this using the um, the filters on the grid. So, you know, when you have a lot of experiments, it's hard to look through all of them, but this might be helpful um, to use the filters to actually help you do that. So let's go ahead and um, open one. And I think this one will, um, you can click load results or you can double click and it'll open up the uh, results for you. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is it. So we have the ETD experiment and we have the UVPD. This is the process and review page of um, the top-down analysis. And you can see that the red box is around peak one. And if we 
come down to the bottom table, uh, you'll see that we're looking at peak one and we're looking at the first proteiform. This is the annotated deconvolution spectrum. What you're seeing is you're seeing the UVPD1 and uh, the ETD1 at the same time. Over here, what you're seeing is um, this is actually for the unmodified uh, FC, so this does not have the glycan on it. You're seeing a combined result. So this is combining the ETD and the um, UVPD for that modification or for that form of the protein for that proteoform. And if we scroll down, you'll see this is the ETD results. So this is the matched ETD spectrum. And down here, this is the match UVPD spectrum. And all of this information is also over here in the table. So let me show you, and then you have the source spectrum from both, if you want to get to the source spectrum. And then the last tab is the, um, a tabular form of the output for um, both of those, um, the matching and the searching for both. So this is a tabular form that you can actually filter. You can export the results. If you scroll over, you'll see which fragments came from which file and, and which ones were produced from where. And then you could also go down to a deeper level if you want to confirm and look at the individual charge state level and the deconvolution information. So let's go back to the fragment. Let me um, go over just this table in a little bit more detail because there's a lot of information here. Um, so let's let's um, collapse this so you can actually see. So when we when we do this experiment, we're really doing um, this by peaks. Okay, so we know we have the light chain, the heavy, or we have the the light chain, the FC, and the FD, and so we define three peaks in our experiment. So if we have peak one. And you click at the peak level, so there's different levels of this table um, in which you can actually click at, okay? And when you click at the, the peak level, what happens is over here, you're seeing um, the combined search results for the different proteoforms. And so for peak one, so that was the glycan, that's the FC, we had seven different proteoforms. So if we come over here, we're going to see seven different combined protein coverage maps. And combined meaning it's ETD and UVPD data all at the same time. So this is the first proteoform. And then as we scroll down, this is um, A2G0 and you can see that the N has the modification. And again, you're seeing UVPD and ETD data all at the same time. And then this is the next proteoform, so A2G0F. And you'll notice we have 69% coverage. And then these are just the different glycoforms. And you could tell by looking right here, so you can see the different glycoforms. And if you expand this level, so here's your individual proteoform information, and then this that matches over here as well. Okay, so, so peak level is going to show you the different proteoforms from the combined search. Now if we go to um, the LC, which is the light chain, we only have one proteoform. So, and because we didn't have any modifications on the light chain, so now you're seeing the light chain with the combined search. And you can um, expand this and you'll see you just have one, one individual proteoform. Now, if you want to go to the specific raw file level, you can also go down to the third level of the table. And then if you click on the individual raw file level, now you're looking at the individual, you know, this is your, your ETD spectra, this is your UVPD spectra. So you can, you can get to the individual data as well. Now, one thing that is um, also possible in the top down workflow is you have the ability to do um, real time optimization as well. So let's say that you wanted to change the deconvolution parameters or you wanted to adjust something. You can actually do that in the real time optimization without having, having to start all over. For example, if you wanted to um, lower the signal to noise threshold or you wanted to increase it uh, for your deconvolution or you wanted to add maybe um, a little bit of thresholding, you can change that parameter and you would want to do it for each of your peaks if you want to apply it to each of your peaks. Um, remember, each peak has its own deconvolution parameter. So, so for example, I'm on peak one right now and I could come in and let's say I want to add 1% of thresholding. So I can do that. Now, 
if I want to do that for all the peaks, I need to click on peak two, and you'll notice that this changes, and now I would need to go and add that as well, and then so on for peak three, if I do that. Okay, let's go back, and then I can hit process. Now at this point is going to allow me to um, overwrite, or I can rename this so I don't actually overwrite my existing results. And when you do this, it's going to um, send it to the queue for processing, and then it'll run. And here's the one that we actually queued up live uh, during the demo. And you can see it took about six minutes to process. So that's pretty fast when you consider what you're doing. Now, um, you can, again, process up to 10 files, and you could have different modes. In this example, we showed UVPD plus ETD, but you could also have HCD and CID as well to get uh, very nice coverage of your protein. Okay, thanks for watching.